Hi, everyone. And um, so this is an old Oxion story that, well, I think it might be just what we all need right now. Oh, let me tell it. Do go on. I'm ever so good. Pragmatic is my middle name. Not really, of course. It's Suzanne. <clears throat> At first, there was nothing. At first, there was nothing. Very nice, good diction. There was nothing for a very long time indeed. And then, there was me. Chaos was born! The first aspiration born from humanity. You see, we're not creators, we're not gods, we're concepts. Your concepts, made real by the collective subconscious. As the first Homo sapiens looked out into the world, all they saw was chaos. Unrest. Freedom. Unlimited possibility. From that possibility came... Me. I help them make sense of the world, embrace the limitless, appreciate the boundless potential. Then I came along. I taught humanity how amazing community could be. How sticking together made everything a little bit nicer, you know? Every time you lot take a new turn, one of us lot is born. And for a long time, it was just the two of us, wasn't it, you little gremlin? That's right. I was the warm fire after a hunt, or a newborn's first squeal. And I was the growl in the night, the open plain ready to be explored. And after that, well... Well, indeed. Things may have gotten a little out of hand. The aspirations. Hmm. It began. I cannot say how it began. Several have claimed the title of instigator. But the first blood was drawn between chaos and power. That doesn't surprise me. In a sense, it was inevitable. By our very nature, we attract opposition. Chaos desired greater freedom for reverie, and so they hoped to abolish the heart. Power disagreed. His army lay siege to the labyrinth of chaos. Army? Power mentioned something about an army before. With enough egregor, we are able to conjure familiars, or split ourselves into a thousand willing facets. Power used both. But Chaos laid their traps well, and their trickery ate away at Power's advance. They say truth is often the first casualty of war, and so it almost was for us. They attempted to break the deadlock, on whose side I cannot recall, and they paid a heavy price. For my own part, I tried to stem the tide of hostility. But no one would listen. Those were dark days indeed. It 
was rather horrid. You saw what happened when you rescued me from that misery pit and removed the heart of reverie. All hell broke loose. We were all afraid it was only a matter of time until the fighting broke out again. Reverie and Brittle are mirrors. The state of one affects the other. And in the island of Atina, we found the keystone between the two realms. Was it we who caused the downfall of the Oxyons? Or was it the waning of their culture that forced us to war? Impossible to know. The bond between our realms is not a single strand, but an endless sea of connections. That whole mess and this one are perfect examples of why we needed an oracle. When you can't rely on causality, at least you can get a second opinion. Someone to choose the heart. Someone to help shape the direction of reverie. Someone to become the heart behind the heart. An observer and a guide. Worked out pretty well, I'd say. Go on then. You've got them in the palm of your WhatsApp. Don't lose them. Maybe you talk about the first oracle. What were they like? Why did they choose who they chose? <laughs> Good luck with that. Can't imagine you getting anything worth repeating out of this bunch. Or at least nothing coherent. Everyone's got an opinion. It's like our story, isn't it? We did our part. Now it's up to you to bring it home. Oh, it doesn't end. No stories end. They just peter out. Look, I can tell you this much. For every cycle of humanity, each time there's a big old change in your world, a new aspiration is born. We're well overdue for a new one. Like, really, it's been ages. truth is, I don't know what happened next. I don't know what the Oracle is meant to represent. I guess we have to make up our own story from here on out. Oxion writings tell of a final Oracle. A chosen one, for lack of a better term. Their deities, the aspirations Polly spoke of, all of them were waiting for this final piece of the puzzle. They called this oracle Harmony. They referred to every oracle this way, hoping against hope that this time the title would stick. Hoping for the moment an oracle would become one of them, an aspiration. Who were the oracles? How did you choose them? Did you even choose at all? What do you want from me? Really? So, nothing's changed, has it? 
I'll have to figure this out by myself. Harmony, wait! Don't call me that! Yeah, the truth is, we chose the first oracle out of desperation. We needed them. We needed their guidance. We needed an end to the war. An end we were unable to bring about ourselves. So, that's all they were? At all? Uh, initially, yes. But then, well, we realized you're all right, you lot. Humanity. You may not believe this, but it turned out we'd been so obsessed with our own affairs that we'd completely overlooked everything in Brittle. And so the arrangement became permanent, and the oracles became a guiding hand on the rudder of reverie. Not leaders, but advisors. Major domos. Producers. Friends! But what about me? What do you want from me? That, I'm afraid, is up to you. What kind of oracle you choose to become is not up to us. It is the very nature of the agreement that you continue as your own person. Right? Right. Well, in that case, I'm going to be... As the Oracle, I want to be empathetic. As the Oracle, I want to feel what others feel and consider how others will react. Every decision must be for the benefit of the many, not the few. I will be dedicated to causes greater than myself. Previous oracles were peacemakers, decision makers. I want to look further than that. I want to look at the whole, not the pieces. Guide the aspirations toward the end, not the means. There were other oracles who took this road. The very first, in fact. They built the sanctuaries, private places, where each aspiration could be separate from the others. Places where we could feel safe, unthreatened. The war did not end immediately, but its intensity lessened as we were given the space for rational thought. It was an idea we could never have conceived of. But then, how did they end the war? There was only one possibility. They also had to bring peace to Brittle. Wait. sounds like a pretty lousy way to end a war. Uh, Polly, you were talking about the first oracle like you were relaying someone else's words. Oh, yes. I didn't realize I, I was, I, I guess. They're right, of course. The role of an oracle should be to integrate themselves into reverie, immerse themselves in the ways of the aspirations. I know if 
I had access to all human wisdom and knowledge, I'd definitely want to learn from them. The first oracle split their time between the realms. They learned from the aspirations, but also their fellow humans. This was their skill. Duality of perspective. But to end the war in Brittle, they had to rely on reverie. They listened to the aspirations, individually and together. And in the end, they gave the Oracle a gift. A way to bring peace to Brittle. The aspirations revealed a secret to them. That each new cycle of humanity birthed a new aspiration. And that perhaps, perhaps this was the Oracle's path to become even more than what they had made them. To become a new aspiration. This was back when Atina was facing its darkest days. There was an ecological disaster. The specifics are lost to time, but we know the population was devastated by vicious storms, which brought floods and mudslides. Then, as they are wont to do, a dictator arose, taking advantage of the pain and suffering to wield absolute power. The people were despondent. The ruling class's own inadequacy provided the perfect distraction. As they lurched from one calamity to the next, the populace grew ever more apathetic. And when there were signs of rebellion, half the populace looked away or sided against their own interests. It was up to the Oracle to break this cycle. To break the system that had enslaved the people. So they had to act. They decided to. The Oracle had faith in the people to dig themselves out. They pursued a path of knowledge. Teaching the populace a different way to live. Foundations of new forms of government were built. Curiosity reigned, and people studied the world around them. What's more, people shared their knowledge. They didn't secret it away or censor it. They taught one another. This gave them more power through the sum of that knowledge. They decided to... They decided to start again, thanks to the gift of prescience. The Oracle and a select few decided to begin a new cycle, outside of the old. They believed Atina had become unsalvageable. That they had to instead create the world they wanted to live in. The Oxion civilization collapsed. After a few decades, all that was left were some musty books and ruins. The tyrant destroyed the rest, but the Oracle and their followers were safe. They found a corner of Atina to call home, a space where the tyrant's influence was weak. 
They created their own way of life and lived in peace. Great! So, what? This oracle and their cultists just left the rest to hang? My thoughts precisely. And they thought this tyrant would just let them be? Let me guess. That didn't happen? But wait. Change is a long-term process, right? You told me that. Sure. So how do you enact long-term change if there's no one around to, you know, actually change things? That dictator guy, long gone. Consigned to the history books. How many people here have even heard of him? What if that's because of the seeds the Oracle planted? Planted on their own terms? Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right. So go on then. Which aspiration are you going to choose? Who becomes the heart? 